The third exercise in the ProMax Foundations course covers a simple MDEA sweetening unit. Before we go into the specifics of defining and solving the system, let's walk through a quick overview of an amine sweetening unit. In this example, the sour feed is first put through a saturator block. This piece of the simulation is fictional to help us determine the amount of water present in a saturated stream. Often the gas analysis is presented on a dry basis, with an additional knowledge that the stream is fully saturated with water. This block allows for Promax to determine exactly how much water is in the stream at the process temperature and pressure. The inlet gas stream is then contacted with an amine to reduce the amount of acid gases, typically carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide. This contact is a chemical absorption, indicating that there are reactions occurring between the amines and the acid gases. We will look at this in more detail as we work through this example. In general, there is an amine solution that is dropped from the top of the tower and later regenerated in a continuous loop. The amine selected depends on the specific use and requirement of the unit and can include amines such as MEA, DEA, DGA, MDEA, and DIPA, and may also include some types of inactivator such as piperazine. Mixed amines are often used as specialty amines, and certain amounts of an acid such as phosphoric acid may also be mixed in at a small concentrations to help with amine regeneration. Regardless of exactly the amine being circulated, it is diluted to some extent with water, often between 50 and 80 weight percent of water. Since absorption is favored at higher pressures and lower temperatures, the solution is pumped up to the process pressure and then cooled before entering the contactor. The amine cooler is typically limited to approximately 10 degrees above the inlet feed gas temperature to keep frothing and hydrocarbon condensation to a minimum. Promax keeps track of the reactions that are occurring in the tower with a rigorous kinetic model for the tower. This model requires more information than is necessary for an equilibrium tower and is set from within the project viewer. First, the tower type of T-suite kinetics must be selected for a vapor liquid contactor. Once this is selected, Promax will attempt to use our amine sweetening based kinetic tower model. Additional required information should be placed in the stage data tab. Under the column hardware selection, we can designate some general tower information. We can set here whether the tower is trayed or packed, the diameter or fraction flooding of the tower, the real to ideal stage ratio, and the system factor. Selecting trays, random packing, or structured packing will affect the options for the following tabs. Any column can have any mixture of trays and packing depending on the actual setup of the column. If you know the diameter of the column required or of an existing column, place this in the diameter. Otherwise, use a reasonable value for the fraction flooding for Promax to estimate the required diameter for this unit. Typical values range from about 65% to 80%. The real to ideal stage ratio for an amine contactor is approximately 3 for a trade tower. This indicates that the overall column efficiency is about 33%, or that it takes about 3 real stages to equal an ideal stage. Since theoretical stage separation is what basis most information is available on, Promax bases its calculations on this as well. The value of 3 comes from decades of verification in operating plants and can be seen in most texts on the subject and the GPSA handbook. It is not a factor of which amine is used and is a good starting point for all common amines. The third input here was the system factor. For amine contactors, the common value used is about 0.8. The smaller the number, the more foaming the system is known for. A value of 1 indicates no foaming. Next, switching to the tray tab, we can set the last few pieces of information. The tray spacing, weir height, and number of passes are all required. If you know more information on specific trays, you may set whether it is a round valve tray or a sieve tray, fraction active area, and some other specific information. If you're interested in modeling a packed tower, please see a separate tutorial for instructions and recommendations on modeling a packed tower. High pressure columns are typically followed by a rich amine flash drum to help reduce the pressure and recover some of the gases without the regenerator. The lower pressure rich amine is then fed into the regenerator, which is normally operated around 12 to 15 psig. The regenerator operates at a higher temperature and lower pressure to essentially reverse the reactions that occurred in the absorber. The tower type is most often set as a T-suite alternate stripper type, which reduces the required specifications while still maintaining a reactive tower basis for the regeneration. By selecting this tower type, Promax assumes a tower efficiency of 50%, or a real to ideal stage ratio of 2. This does not need to be set in the column, but will dictate the correct number of ideal stages you should set for the tower. In fact, this simplification allows you to not set any of the column internal information, as the assumptions that Promax will make for you eliminates the need for this information. However, the column does have two degrees of freedom provided by the condenser and by the reboiler. 
Typically, the condenser operates by an air cooler and provides cooling down to approximately 120 degrees Fahrenheit. This typically provides for a good recovery of amine with acceptable water losses feeding onto the sulfur recovery unit. The reboiler often operates based on a set amount of duty to the reboiler compared to the flow rate of the amine. The reboiler temperature is not a good specification to make and is never recommended because of the relationship between the mixture boiling temperature and pressure. Instead, a simple rule of thumb for a good initial guess is one pound of steam for every gallon of amine solution. After the amine has been regenerated, it is then returned to the Promax makeup blowdown block prior to being pumped and cooled. Since the amine system is an open loop system, there will be some losses, some to the sweet gas, some to the flash gas, and the rest to the vent gas. While the majority of the loss will be water, a small amount of amine will be lost as well. The makeup blowdown block in Promax will calculate any of these losses in the circulation loop and find the amount of both amine and water required to be made up. Our next tutorials will cover how the specifications should be made, followed by a tutorial showing answers to questions over the system. These questions will address lean enriched loading results, lean enriched approaches to equilibrium in the column, and several other common questions on these systems.